some instrumentation has a very, very wide frequency spectrum, and if you used the Dynamics module in single band mode, you may not get the kind of results that you're looking for because all of those different frequencies may need to be compressed with different settings. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've loaded a drum set and I've got the Dynamics module right now in single band mode. So let's do some compression on this drum set. So I'm going to start the playback. And then let's add some compression. So I'm going to use a 4 to 1 compression ratio. And then let's uh, have it compress a little bit sooner. So I'm going to drop the threshold a bit. And now let's listen to the before and the after. See how the bass drum and the snare drum and those other strong attack transients are actually reducing the gain so much that it's leaving a lot of that high frequency noise in. Let's listen again. Plus the fact that it just sounds kind of overly squished right at the moment. So this is a perfect time to go for the multiband mode. So I'm going to enable the multiband button right down here. And then bear in mind that when you have the multiband mode enabled, these band controls now are active. So you have band one, two, three, plus the all mode and the link control. And I'll go over those last two a little bit later. But since we're in the multiband mode, we have three separate frequency dependent compressors and gates. Each one will work in a different frequency range. And so I'm going to come over here to the crossover view in the spectrum and have it do the analysis of the crossover frequencies. So I'm going to start the playback and then right or control click in the spectrum and choose learn. There, now it's made those frequency determinations. So by selecting the bands here in the spectrum window, it's going to allow you to choose the compressor that you're working with. So this would be the low frequency compressor and gate. This would be the mid range compressor and gate, and this would be the high frequency compressor and gate. So let's say that we wanted to really beef up the bottom end. So we're going to really compress the low frequencies. So I'm going to click on the low frequency right here. And now all the settings here in the touch screen are going to be used on the low frequency band. So let's increase the threshold quite a bit. I want this low frequency compressor to be active almost all the time. And then let's increase the compression ratio to about four to one. Now that did pull some of the volume away from the sound, so I'm going to enable the auto gain control down here. Now we get that nice pillowy compressed sound, but just on the low frequencies. Let's listen to it before and after. And let's also try the vintage mode. It's a very subtle difference, but that's a really nice sound. So I'm going to leave the mode set to vintage, and now I'm going to move on to the second or mid-range compressor and gate. And I can do that by clicking the second band control down here, but I actually like moving up here to the spectrum display and clicking that frequency band here. But now I have the exact same compression controls, but I can assign different values. So let's listen to this all important mid-range frequency band. So I'm going to hit the solo button. And I want to add just a general amount of compression to this mid-range frequency band. So I'm going to move the threshold down to a little bit larger value than the bass drum frequencies or the bass frequency, which was around 22 dB below zero. So at minus 14 dB below zero, that compressor is not going to be active all the time. Only when things like the snare drum and the click of the bass drum occur will the compressor actually engage. So let's move the compression ratio to about two and a half to one. Now 
Now let's listen to it before and after, but I'm going to unsolo that band. So I'm going to come to the bypass button and let's take a listen to the before. That's a nice finish that we've got on that mid-range band. Now let's do something really interesting with the high frequency band. So I'm going to select that high frequency band and I am going to change the compression ratio, but I'm actually going to adjust it in a negative direction. See how the compression ratio knob actually goes below its default setting of 1.0 to 1? So by doing that, we can do some upward compression. So what's going to happen is the quieter sounds in this frequency band or the quieter signal levels are actually going to be increased. Watch what happens over here on the graph when I move that compression ratio to the left. See how interesting that is? Now let's do something else with the gate. I'm going to gate off some of the really, really quiet sounds. So I'm going to use the gate in a negative mode as well. But before I do, I'll need to increase the gate's threshold. And that gives us a very, very lively sounding room because that upward compression is only happening on the high frequency band. Let's listen to the before and the after. That's a really interesting sound, but maybe I'm overdoing it a bit on the high frequencies here, so I'm going to adjust the gate a little bit. And then since I really want to bring out those bass frequencies, I do have the auto gain on, but bear in mind that the gain and the mix controls also work in a global mode or a single band mode. So if I change the global setting to a band mode and then come over and choose the low frequency crossover, then I'm going to increase the gain of the low frequency compressor. Now we're really beefing that bass drum up. And I'm also going to do some of that gating, but in a more traditional sense, so we don't get such a boomy release on those low frequencies. So I'm going to bring that gate threshold up here a bit. And then let's gate some of those really quiet notes in the bass frequencies. See how it is not nearly as lively on those bass frequencies as it was before? Let's listen to the before and the after. So finally, let's talk about the All button and the Link button. When you choose the All Bands mode, then what you see are each compressor band, but all the controls are adjustable all at once, so that you don't have to select each individual frequency band to make adjustments. And then finally, there's the Link button, and this is really nice if you wanted to adjust all of one type of control but have it work across all the compressors simultaneously. So with the link button enabled, let's say that I just wanted to move the threshold of all those bands down a little bit to relax the amount of compression. So I'm going to raise one of those threshold controls, but you'll see that the threshold of every single band is also being adjusted relative to the original position. So that's what the link button does. It makes it very easy to go through and make adjustments to one setting and have it work across all the compressor bands. So that's the multiband mode of the Dynamics module. Make sure you try that on instrumentation that has a very wide frequency range. And next, let's talk about parallel compression.